Hi again, everybody. Welcome into another edition of Inside Cowboy Football with head coach Lance Guidry. I'm your host, Ron Hayes, here with Coach Guidry. And, well, Coach, last Saturday night we go to our, uh, our familiar opponent's place over in Lafayette. Yeah. And, I mean, it was hot. It was humid. <laughs> <laughs> it was packed. It was football, man. It was. It was, uh, it was a good atmosphere. Uh, you know, I thought the Cowboys were ready to uh, get them a victory over there in the swamp, they call it. But uh, the Cajuns had a different uh, answer. <laughs> they, had, they had different answers, and, and they had big interior sure. linemen, man. The offensive line, the defensive line were big. And fans, you're going to see that here in a minute when we show you the highlights. But, I, I mean, I honestly was surprised at the size, Coach. I mean, did you anticipate them being that big? Yeah, we knew they were big, but you really don't know how big they are until you step up on the side of them. They were really big, and they had some – Good players on offense that showed up for the game. You know, the quarterback Jennings did really well, and then of course McGuire had a good night. So uh, they had some weapons and they had some size on both sides, offense and defensive lines. That Cajun cook is paying off over there. It looks like it I'm looks sure. like it. <laughs> Somebody's doing it. Well, your Cowboys go over there, and the Cowboys have a little bit of bad luck. We start the ball game in good shape, then a, uh, a couple of critical licks being laid, I think, hurt the Cowboys, particularly the quarterback. But we'll talk about that as we get into the ball game. Fans, stay with us. We're going to be back. We've got a big show for you here today. Hopefully, you'll stay tuned. Inside Cowboy Football with Lance Guidry is made possible by these sponsors. Well, Coach Lance Gary, like we said, last Saturday was, it's always a special day when we play in the Raging Cajun, but the tailgaters were over there in mass, and so were the fans. Yeah, they, uh, they, it was nice to pull up and see a lot of people. They even got a band out there uh, playing, and uh, it was nice. Well, this is no surprise. No, good cooking all the way around. Y'all don't get to taste any of this in your pregame, because you guys are kind of under wraps and protected, <laughs> but look at the fans. Look at that. Yeah, I seen Homsy there. Uh, I seen him uh, cooking and delivering out food, and they got a good game going on. There's the Poussons. The Poussons bunch, yeah. Mr. Bills and yeah. all them. Good bunch right there. Bill's got extra support in that chair that he's sitting in, by the way. <laughs> a little weather threat there early, and it would come to pass later on in the ball game. but here come the Cowboys. Yeah, we're taking the field. It's good to see all that blue and gold there, the opening kickoff. Uh, so we, we was ready to go. They kicked it in the end zone deep, so we ended up uh, getting a touchback and started offensively uh, right there to Parker Ogeron, right off the bat. It's a key uh, third down, I think that was, so we ended up converting. Right there might have been second down. I can't remember. Parker's getting some good play in time as a freshman. Sure enough. Here goes uh, Kent Shelby on the screen play. It's a big He's play tough. right here. He's tough. He is just tough. Good play. He's been running with the ball real well. Here we we in there close. Uh, James had already taken a lick, and uh, and he gets another one. But he, he had uh, gotten hurt previous play, uh, maybe two plays prior to that, and he had an injury to his buttocks. Uh, here goes good kick. Trent Manuel keeping his head down, kicking it through. We go up on the scoreboard, 3 nothing ahead of the Cajuns. Manuel had a pretty good evening. He did. He was 3 for 3, and we needed that. All right, here come the Cajuns back at you. They're coming back at us. It's a good, good throw and catch right here on the third down. They end up converting. Uh, not bad coverage, but we got to know where the sticks are at a little bit better than that. And, you know, we up three nothing, keeping the ball in front of us right now. And, and there goes McGuire. We're not gap sound right here. We didn't get the ball spilled outside to the safeties like we needed to, and paid the price. McGuire, 19 carries, 139 yards on the day. Yeah, he had a big day. We got to get underneath those blocks. Here's a good play on a, on a third down. We end up stopping him short right here. Uh, and force him to punt. Oh, that was a fourth down. I'm sorry. It was a fourth down, and we stopped him. That's a big play here. This is big. I don't know if the ball was a little hot coming in or if, or if the sun got in Ryan's eyes because it was about right there over the top of the stadium. And yeah. Yeah. that was a big play for them. And then, of course, on the very next play, they go up to the end zone. And so it's, I don't know, I don't know if our angle was bad or what, but definitely can't, that it can't like happen. like he had it right there, and then it just slipped away from him, and the Cajuns recovered. Yeah. It's right it, off his fingertips. It looked like he got on him pretty quick. Uh, we didn't we didn't execute the play, whatever. And they go right up top on the next play. Kind of throws a back shoulder and good coverage. But today's football, you got to be able to play the football. 
or wherever they throw it. So they'll go up on the board ahead of us, 7-3 at this point. Coach, it looked to me like they were creating space a little bit. Well, you're not going to get that today. You know, they, they push off, but you can't complain about it. Uh, here goes a good executed play, a good block inside, good run by Ryan. Offensive line did a great job right here. Ryan got 118 yards on the night on 21 carries, averaged about five and a half yards per carry, Coach. Yeah, if Grant's still in because James is out with a bruise and we end up not converting right here on third and four and forces to punt. But we end up drawing them all sides. Last week we faked the punt. This week we got in a little same formation and and then got them to jump all sides. We worked on that all week. So it's a good job by our special teams. Pack them in tight, then you spread them out and they jump. Yeah, Grant did a good job of extending this play, getting the first down. So moving the chains inside the 30-yard line, close to 25. Get a little pressure, and you can't take a sack in the red zone because you get out of the red zone area where you can kick field goals. So that wasn't good getting that sack. But anyway, we come in and we end up getting some of it back, and Trent knocks down another one. So we're down by one. Second quarter, nine minutes, 36 seconds left to go in the half. Seven, six, and, and they come right back uh, with a big play, ran a rail route. Uh, I'm sorry, had a fade route, same thing, through the back shoulder, might have pushed off a little bit, but again, you're not going to get that call. You're going to have to play the ball when it's up in the air. The ball's for anybody, and they're going to let offensive guys do that. Here's a good keep by Jennings. Uh, didn't execute uh, on this play. It's a little bit, you know, our fault as well as coaches. We ran a we ran a blitz in there, and we went in gap sound. So that one we took as coaching staff. Not 14 to 6 now, ULL. Here's a good run right here, good block. Good block, and Ryan gets good 12, 13 yards. So it's 14 6. We've got six minutes left to go in the second quarter. Uh, we tried to fake a screen right here and go up top, end up finding the secondary guy, and a great catch by Nick Edwards. Good throw by James. James is back in the game, of course. Here's a great run by uh, LeWayne Ross. He almost gets in there, and uh, we got to hold on to that ball because that ball can't keep coming out like that. Um, Ross has got size. He this, does this have size. size. We need to have a little bit better ball security. You know, reaching out sometime uh, calls you to fumble right there. That, that can't happen. So we get in our jumbo package. It's coming up. And lead the way with Isaiah, and there's Dylan Long, another touchdown. Good short yardage back. Isaiah might be the key to busting those holes. Yeah, right there on the I think people okay. jump out of his way sometimes. You think? So okay. we go up 14-12, uh, going for two. Uh, probably if we'd have waited a little longer, we had Crowley at the top, number two. We had him, but we he didn't wait on him, and uh, we ended up not getting it. 14-12 uh, at half. At halftime, yeah. yeah. So we go with the second half. We kick off, great coverage all night. Got a lot of people doing some good things. Uh, Mike Uday right there, Matt LaFerrera making the ball bounce. Jermaine ends up getting the tackle right here, and a host of other Cowboys. The series was big. Did you see a lot of speed on ULL side of the ball? I did. I saw a lot of speed in the backfield. Wide receivers were average, but they were massive up front. Uh, they ended up getting a holding call on the kickoff return, so we got them pushed back. Uh, we ended up getting some good coverage, and we ended up getting a cover sack right here, which is really good. There you go. Jamario Gross. There's your DWA. There he is. We're going to have good field position starting out. Man, if we could have got time on this one, we had him open to the field. Uh, we ended up getting a grounding call on this. Uh, even though Ken's right there, they guys for grounding, I mean. That surprise you? Not over there, it don't surprise well, me. Well, I hear you. I hear you. You know, the Sun Belt's going to be loyal to the Sun Belt. This is a gutsy play by James being hurt, still going out, trying to get the first down, and he should have slid right there, and I took an extra hit. He showed grit. He, he showed did. moxie, coach. He did show some grit. Uh, tough. Here's a great catch and throw. Golly, Look by the freshman pork Look goes wrong. Look at that. Ogeron's making a name for himself here. He is. Great catch on the sideline. Five catches for 61 yards on the night. We got another field goal. Be up here, and then we're going to go up 15 to 14. Every time we did something, though, it looked like the Cajuns answered back, you know. Here goes. We're not, we didn't set the edge hard enough. Missed tackle right there. And McGuire's off. Good effort, but just not, not being able to cap the defense like we need to. Coach, it was amazing. He averaged 7.3 yards a carry. Yeah, most of them were big runs. Uh, it's another big run by him. He's just his will to break tackles and get in the end zone. And uh, good bat. Uh, we didn't match the physicality of him, and we're going to need to throughout this conference. He's getting fired up now. Yeah. 
They ended up making a big play right here. We got a screen and they tackled the back, which is a good job of them. And it forces us to punt. Of course, he got good field position again. Here's the post rail, uh, curl rail. We left the guy open and you can't have that in the secondary. It's hard enough to cover him when the, you got him in coverage playing the ball, but especially you can't let guys go free. And here's Jennings again. Uh, safety's not there where we need him to be and Jennings goes in for the score. So they capitalized on off of our uh, mishaps and not being technical sound, but hey, we're still in the game. Uh, it's not over with yet. We stop them on a, nice a two play. point. Good play right nice here. Play. You know, so we're down right now, but the Cowboys aren't going to quit. Cowboys down 27 15 in the third quarter. 27 15 is a completion bomb right here. Uh, they're knocking on the door again. I don't know if this is getting to the lightning delay. I think the lightning delays. Yep, it there is, we go. I know it was coming. Yeah. So we've got him as third and 18, and we got to go in. I think it probably helped us a little bit right here, even though it was, you know, third and 18, was able to regroup a little bit and come out after it. Kind of held him scoreless after that. They maybe got a field goal. <coughs> you think fatigue was setting in a little bit before the lightning delay, Coach? Uh, you know what? It's hard to tell. You know, it's, it's a game of momentum. Okay. Of course, we stopped them, and here we go. Cowboys are back at it. 13 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. So I do think the lightning delay did help us stop stop them a little bit. Here, uh, just as late late in the game, eight minutes left to go, and end up forcing them out of bounds right there. But, again, safety's wasn't where we needed them to be, but we will get it straight. Here they go. We end up stopping them right here. Good goal line stand on third down. Uh, they took a delay. And uh, we ended up declining. There they came. We actually got a piece of that one. It looked like it. it looked we like got a piece ball. of that one, yeah. Which makes it 30 to 15 now, of course. Fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. And uh, it's four minutes to play. Good catch and throw right here. Uh, we end up getting we end up getting a penalty, which is going to set us back here in a little bit. Shepard had six catches on the night for 75 yards for the Cowboys. Yeah. Here's a good throw. Uh, this is, of course, going into two-minute right here mode, and we end up getting in there and um, <clears throat> getting ready to score right here. Good run by Dylan again. So we get back, you know, get back some of the points. We got to go for two. We go for one right here. I'm sorry. Make it 21, uh, 22, 30. So we're down by eight. Doesn't get a stop, and then uh, ball game. Time to shake hands and get ready for the next challenge. Oh, yeah. And the Cowboys are going to do that. A couple of highlights. Yeah, we just got to get ready to uh, get ready for next week, you know. All right, let's do it. Fans, stay with us. We'll be right back with more of Inside Cowboy Football right after this break. Well, Coach Lance Gidry, we talked a little bit about stats in the last segment. Let's talk a little bit more about stats in this segment. What do you say we review what happened last Saturday night? Well, the biggest stat is the scoreboard. And we... Of course, we're down 30 to 22, so we lose the ball game. That's the biggest stat that you always look at. But you look at first downs, you know, we had 27 first downs to their 20. Uh, rushing, this is the biggest stat that this is, you know, I always say that, that the, the physical of a team, the most physical team's going to win, and this is indicated right here. They rushed the ball for 220 yards to our 99. So that was a big stat right there. We threw for 265, which is good. They is at 170. Total offense, we were at 364. They were at 390. Uh, penalties, we had eight. Uh, they had 11. Uh, time of possession was huge for us. We kept the ball 36 minutes. They had the ball 23. So that's good for the Cowboys anytime you keep the ball 36 minutes. Uh, seven of 18 on third down, which isn't really that bad. They were three of nine, which that's good on third down defense. Of course, we had one turnover, and it was costly. They ended up scoring in the turnover. And red zone, we were both five for five. They had a touchdown, and we had a couple more field goals. Uh, and in total plays, we ran 88, and they had 61. Coach, really, I mean, it's pretty much even when you look at the stat sheet, except for the scoreboard. Yeah, it's even in a lot of ways. Turnover was huge. I think the two big uh, stats is the turnovers, uh, which costed us, and then, of course, the rushing, their rushing offense to our rushing offense. All right, Coach. Well, we appreciate that look at the stats. And now it's time to go to the players' post-game interviews, and this is what the players had to say immediately after the ball game. It is disappointing, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, I think the game changer, you know, we fumbled on the uh, screen pass. But, you know, we're going to bounce back, though. You know, our offense is really good. Our O-line did a hell of a job tonight. Um, our receivers, they caught the ball really well. We ran the ball well. We just stopped ourselves. So, um, you know, we're going to be back, and, that, and that's what practice you know, is for. Okay. We're going to fix those things and come back for SFA. I feel like you can put us up against anybody in the country, but tonight it all fell back on us. 
Uh, we were supposed to do our part, and I don't think we did our part to the best of our abilities, and that ended up in a loss tonight. We had some things that supposed to happen, but it didn't happen. Like I said, it's the little things. It's things we always worked on, and it's just, I guess guys got out of their element, and you know, when things get to going haywire in your mind, you, you just combobulate it. It's just little things. We have to come back and we have to focus on little things and get great at the little things to eliminate uh, big plays. We just have to got to get it together, but it's okay. Well, Coach Gitter, your players seem to have the right mental attitude after the ball game. They're ready to get after it again. Yeah, we, you know, we knew this was a big game for us. It was a big game for our fans and our university, and they really wanted to win uh, for those people and for ourselves, but they know it's, you know, that doesn't affect the conference race and this week's conference, of course, and and uh, but man, we sure like to get away with a win against the Cajuns. Yeah. But you know, to focus in on what we need to, uh, this week is going to be huge for us, and we got to correct the little things. And they're right; you know, the little things uh, end up being becoming big things if you don't fix them. All right, Coach Gidry. Well, now, fans, we're going to talk a little bit about our student athlete guest of the week, and a young man named Jake Grody, a senior defensive lineman for the Cowboys. Here's our talk with Jake. It's time for our student athlete of the week. And this week we have a stellar student athlete, to say the very least. Jake Grody is with us. Jake's a senior from Katy, Texas, and he's here at McNeese. Jake, let's first start out with uh, the academic side of your life. You're a uh, not a fifth-year senior. You're actually through with your undergraduate, and you're working on your master's, I understand. Yeah, that's correct. I came in with some high school credits and then did summer school every year, just did what I had to do. And now I'm doing my MBA here at McNeese in uh, business administration and uh, just doing all the classes that I, that I like doing. People always say it's a challenge to be an athlete and a student because of the time on the road, the time at practice, the time playing the games and all that stuff. How have you coped with that in your career? Uh, it's just all about balance. You know, you have your football life and you have your school life. It's all about keeping work at work. So when you come to football, it's time to put all the school away. But when you're done with football and you've rest and everything, it's just time to get down to your studies and just do whatever the instructors have you to do. All right, you are on the football side. You're a member of the defensive unit. In fact, you got considerable playing time against Charleston State in the first game against uh, or the, or that the Cowboys played. Um, what do you remember? What is the best football memory you have here at Miami State University in the limited time you've had to play? Uh, probably my best memory would have to be last year when we played Central Arkansas. I had had a game where I made a couple turnovers, and it wasn't so much about the turnovers, but the way that you know everyone came around me and they everyone was really excited for me, and I just felt like at that point, you know, all the brothers that I had and their team, they're just really excited for me, and so I guess that moment that I had that I could do for everyone else just really made me feel like at home, like with everyone, and it just really made me happy. Tell me a little bit about the defense with attitude. This has been the big catchphrase this year, defense with attitude. Do you actually see that now that Coach Gidry is your head coach? Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing it more and more every year since Coach Gidry's been here. He instills a lot of, like, his personality on our defense and then even more so with the whole team now that he's head coach. It's just all about, you know, being better than the other team across from you, you know, like our defense being better than their defense and just every day challenging yourself to not just come out there and play X's and O's, but to be passionate about the game that we're all fortunate to play. Okay, how about the fact that you have been a Cowboy for a number of years, you're a senior. Uh, the leadership responsibility, how do you feel that as a leader to the young guys on the team? It's just all about being, you know, a good, a good uh, coach for everyone as far as like when you're not in the game, you know, just talking through all the plays and really just helping guys out and showing them the way that they're supposed to. A lot of guys come from different high schools, a lot of different areas. So you just kind of have to bring them all in, show them that we're family and just really go over all the, all the things that we like to be as Cowboys. Have you had trouble adjusting to a new defensive line coach? Uh, not really. Coach Aber has been here. He actually recruited me, and he's been he's been a linebackers coach with us for a while. So, really, I mean, we we miss our old coach, but you know, we have the coaches that we have, and we love them, and we're you know we're a tight unit. So, really, adjusting to Coach Aber hasn't really been anything. I mean, we're all close together, and you know, it's all about coming together, and we'll be all right. What is that uh, ring that you put on as a Southland Conference champion last year mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. It means, you know, that was our goal as everyone's goal coming in being recruited, you know, is that you want to get those Southland rings. You want to win conference, prove that, you know, you're a great team and that just from there taking the next step, trying to get to the national championship. But it's all about one step at a time. And that was that was one of our goals. All right. What are your personal goals this year as a Cowboy? 
Uh, personal goals, honestly, is just, you know, being a good mentor for everyone around me, just showing them the right way to do things. I mean, really, it's not about individual stats because at the end of the day, the ring we got last year, the next ring we're going to get, it doesn't matter. You know, it all says uh, Magnese Cowboys, and uh, it doesn't say, you know, stats or anything like that. So really, it's all about the team. We want to thank Jake Grody for joining us here as our student athlete guest of the week here on Inside Cowboy Football. Well, Coach Lance Guidry, how important is it to have a young man like Jake Grody on your football team, a, 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 a true student athlete? Jake is awesome. Jake's awesome in so many ways. Of course, you have to check Jake's classes. Jake's going to be there, and Jake loves school, and Jake's going to be very successful in life. But what Jake brings to the team is Jake's very smart. He knows the defense inside and out, and he really is a good mentor to the younger defensive linemen and even some of the guys that are starting because uh, nobody knows it better than Jake. So uh, Jake's real positive. He's a total team player. And, you know, he comes from Katie. Katie guys are used to winning. Okay. You know, him and Bo Brown were teammates. So uh, I love Grody. Can't have enough Grody's on the team. All right. All right, fans, stay with us. We're going to be right back with more of Inside Cowboy Football with head coach Lance Gidry. Well, Coach Gidry, enough about what happened last week. Now we've got the Southland Conference starting this week. And a team you're very familiar with, Stephen F. Austin coming to town. Sure, Stephen F. Austin's coming to town, the Lumberjacks. Uh, coach Conk, of course, was a coach at uh, Central Arkansas. He's actually a coach here when I was a player yeah. my freshman year. So sure. uh, we're familiar with the Conks, and the Conks are familiar with McNeese. His son, Zach, is a quarterback. A couple years ago, they came to the hole and beat us. So we're going to be uh, looking to get revenge back on when they beat us here a couple years ago. Of course, we won last year, but uh, they got a good football team. Uh, Zach's talented, got some good wide receivers, good running back. Defensively, they run to the football hard, much improved. I think their skill sets are a lot better than they were. So we're going to be in a fight. Uh, it's not going to be a pushover by any means. Now we're playing for real. Playing for real, playing for keeps. You got it. All right, Coach, uh, we wanted to take a little bit of time to give you a chan chance rather, to thank the folks that are so important and critical to the show, and that, of course, is your sponsor. Sure. You know, I mean, we couldn't do it without them. There's a lot of people responsible for a lot of things we do at McNeese. But far as this show with me, Inside Cowboy Football, you've got Lake Charles Toyota, Sonic, Casa Manana, Tarver Ford, Golden Nugget Casino, Market Basket, Jeff Davis Bank, Gulf Coast Autoplex out of Jennings, uh, First Federal Bank, Billy Navarre, St. Pat's Hospital, Pompelli Tires, Merchant Formers and Bank, Mud and Brookhouse, of course, law firm. Then you have Southern Home Health, Bubba Osselet out of Jennings, LaBerge, Lake Charles, Casino, MNC Allfield Services, Richard Law Firm, and Seafood Palace. Rich Reshard, I should say, there not Richard. Reshard. Ron would, Ron would be mad at me. <laughs> it's amazing how you remember all those sponsors right off the top of your head. Well done. Well, done. well fans, we have a, a somber moment. We want to uh, announce, in case you are not aware of it, that a, a true member of the Cowboy family passed away last week. A guy that most of us knew is Cowboy Chuck. Coach. Yeah, Cowboy Chuck was special. You know, he was. Uh, he was a guy that never complained about anything. Uh, He's a, just a total supporter of our players and our coaches, and nothing but good things came out of Chuck's mouth. And he was always happy to see you. He was always had a smile on his face. He always brightened up your day. Even after a loss, he was there and give you a big old hug. And you knew Cowboy Chuck was going to be back no matter how cold it was in the stadium or how many losses we had. A true fan and a true supporter. We lost a good one. And he went all over the country. He and his wife, Paula, would travel with the Cowboys. They'd go as far as Montana. And uh, you could always see that Cowboy hat in the stands. You could. And I was just teasing him the, the game before Tarleton. You know, he, he wore that little funny-looking hat on game day. Yeah. He didn't wear his true Cowboy hat. And I said, man, what kind of hat you got? And he said, my game day hat, Coach. Yes. But uh, really loved him a lot. And uh, he's going to be missed. And I know a lot of our spawn, a lot of our boosters and our fans are going to miss him as well as our players and coaches. Well said. Well said. Fans, be with us again next week for the next edition of Inside Cowboy Football. If you can't be at Cowboy Stadium Saturday night. For cowboys like us.